Welcome to Rose Red Homestead. It is nearly holiday time, and so that is the time for specialty foods. We are going to do something very special with butternut squash when we come back in just a moment. made a video on butternut squash mix where I told you that Jim had gone shopping and had bought a lot of butternut squash and so not only are we doing soup with it but I am going to feature a side dish for Thanksgiving that is called Hasselback butternut squash. However if I did it with this one we would be able to feed the multitudes <laughs> so I found a smaller one that is just the right size for Jim and me and this is the one that I'm going to demonstrate with today. Now I've practiced this several times because this was a new recipe for me and what I have found is that while this squash is just as cute as can be, the dish looks better if the neck is just a little bit longer but I could not find one that was small with a longer neck. This one will do just fine and you want to find one that still has a stem on the top because the stem gives a certain oh, a flavor of fall picked from the garden kind of a thing. So the first step that we're going to do is we're going to split the squash and then we're going to peel it. Then I'm going to um, clean out the seeds and we're going to put it in the oven um, for a little preheat for about 10 or 15 minutes. Then we're going to bring it back and I'll show you what we're going to do that makes it really special. So these stems can be a little bit difficult to cut through. So I asked Jim to cut through this stem ahead of time, which he did. And now I'm just going to split this right in half very carefully, teeter-tottering this knife, hoping that I can do a good job of cutting it pretty much exactly in half. All right, so here we go. So that is, that is just about perfect. I'm going to quickly scrape these seeds out. Now you can save these seeds if you want, but I don't want. So I want to get all the fibers out if possible, and that means a little bit of scraping with this spoon along the sides. Okay, that's pretty clean. Now, I have a baking pan here, and I like this ruffled bottom on this baking pan. Um, it looks really nice, and it, um, I, I just love the way that it cooks. So I'm going to put this one face down, and then I'll do the same thing with the other one. Here they are, ready to go. I'm going to put these in the oven, and uh, we'll, let the, we'll let these just cook. The oven is at 400 degrees. It has been preheating, and I'm going to just stick these in there for about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. If I were doing this big one, I would be doing this one, uh, pre-cooking it for about 20 minutes. We need the flesh to soften up just a little bit because we're going to be cutting into it. So I'll be right back after I get these in the oven. While the squash is pre-cooking for just a few minutes, we're going to put together the glaze. Um, this is a glaze that we will be um, marinating over the top of it, um, both to begin with and during the cooking time. So, um, there are several different recipes for glazes that I looked at on the internet, and I tried a couple of them, um, and then I just put together what we liked based on what I had seen. Now, um, you have a lot of choices for the glaze. It depends on whether you want a sweet glaze or a savory glaze or anywhere in between. Um, most of the recipes called for olive oil right here. And um, we found that the olive oil was not to our taste. And so we have replaced that olive oil with butter. Now this butter is actually ghee. 
This ghee, I've made a video on that as well. And the reason that we can use butter, even though the temperature is going to be up above 400 uh, degrees, is because the, the smoked temperature of this butter, um, once it has all of the milk solids and the protein removed from it, is much higher than just regular butter. You can probably use regular butter. Um, it, your oven just might smoke a little bit. So I'm, that was a half a cup of butter, and this is just a little saucepan. And then some of the um, choices for a sweetener included honey or maple syrup, or just plain sugar. Now, of course, because we've had bees, we are using some of our very own honey. And this is a half a, half a cup of honey. We have one major honey flow in the year, and it is in the fall from a rabbit brush. And so our honey is just a little bit darker than, say, alfalfa honey, but it has a wonderful, rich, and robust flavor. Then the next thing is a little touch of savory. And so um, the savory taste comes from, um, we have fresh herbs out in our garden, and even though we've had several freezes, the um, sage is still okay. So I uh, went out with Jim and we picked some fresh sage this morning. So this is fresh sage and then it is a little bit of dried thyme. So that's probably about two teaspoons of um, those two spices. And notice that those spices are um, about the same ones that you would use to flavor a turkey stuffing. So we're kind of picking up the flavors of the season. And then um, last of all, and this is my own addition, because we kind of prefer a um, sweet, savory mix. This is some of my cranberry sauce. We've just done a recent video on how to do fresh cran cranberry sauce. And then we um, bottled this in some of our wet jars. This is whole berry cranberry sauce. So I'm going to open this, and you just pull the tab, and then release it. <clears throat> Rinse off my spatula here. And this is about a cup, and so I'm going to take about half of it because I'm going to want half of it a little bit later for a glaze. Now, I also have some pecans right here. I'm not going to use those yet. I'll use those at the end for the final garnish. So I'm going to put this on the stove. Here it is in this saucepan, and we're going to just warm it up and it should be warm and all melted and ready to go by the time we get finished with um, um, the next preparation step on the squash. So we'll be back when the squash is ready for the next step. The squash is pre-cooked and it is um, cool enough that I can touch it. So the next thing we want to do is peel it. Now we have found that the best way to peel um, butternut squash is to use a T-shaped peeler just like this one. And so I'm going to just start right here and just swing it back to the back. And we want to get rid of the white stuff as well, a little whitish layer. Get down to the orange as much as possible. There we go, there's the orange. I always thought it would be much harder to peel a butternut squash, but with this peeler it makes it very, very easy. I'm trying to get this bottom as much as possible here. Some of these squash are whiter than others once you get down to that peel, but this one looks really nice. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of these skins. And the next step is we are going to do what is called Hasselback. And this is the funnest thing ever, and it just makes such a beautiful presentation. Now the trick is we're going to be cutting this squash into very small slices, but we don't want to cut all the way through. 
So the best thing to do is to find a couple of things that you can use as guards. Now I have, I just have this um, wooden implement set that who, the handles are all the same depth. And so if I put those on either side of the squash, then when I bring my flat knife straight down, it will hit the handles of this <clears throat> and not go all the way through. So that's what I'm going to do to, uh, to do this, but I'm going to actually start from the other end. I like to get all <laughs> warmed up and ready when I hit that large end. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to cut straight down. And one of the reasons that you pre-cook this is to make the flesh a lot easier to do this slicing with. Now, you can use chopsticks or skewers, whatever you have that might stop you from going all the way through. And it's not the end of the world if you do go all the way through. You just kind of have to butt the two pieces back together again so it looks like they're still together. Now I am making really fine slices. These are probably about an eighth of an inch. You don't want them more than about a quarter of an inch because these need to fan out just a little bit. And your knife goes through the squash much, much easier if the squash has been pre-cooked just a little bit. Now remember, under this bulge, it is hollow uh, because we took the seeds out. And so we need to be just a little bit careful, not so much right now, but especially as we are putting the glaze on and basting it throughout the cooking because that middle part can collapse if we're not careful. And I'm going to scoot these down just a little bit so I've got that handle again in place. Yeah, it's going through much easier when I hit that open place. Now I, I'm I can tell that I'm just a tiny bit crooked, so I'm trying to straighten these out just a little bit before I get to the end. Okay, this one is done. I'm going to put it back in the pan. And I'm going to do the very same thing to the other one. So I wanted to show you one quick thing. This is the second one that's already sliced, but I want to show you what I did. This little wedge right here is loose because my knife went in at an angle instead of straight down. But when a little mistake like that happens, you just poke it in, squeeze it together, and it's as good as new. So we're going to put these now in the pan, back in the pan. <clears throat> and I'm going to get the glaze. Here's the glaze all melted together. Now the butter has risen to the top, of course, as it always does. The cranberry sauce is on the bottom, but here it is and the herbs are all floating on the top. So I'm stirring it around just a little bit and I'm going to just sop this all over this. And what we're wanting is for the glaze to get down in the cracks. Now right now, that's pretty much impossible. But we're going to put it on the top And then about every 10 minutes while it's cooking, 10 or 15 minutes, this is a small one. I'll be doing it every 10 minutes for that great big one that I showed you earlier. That one I would probably do every 15 minutes. So I'm just brushing this all over. Now the oven is hot. Most of the recipes I looked at called for a 425 oven. My oven runs a little bit hot, and um, I tried it at 425, and it um, kind of got, it burned this syrupy stuff as it hit the bottom. So I found with the successive practices that my oven at 400 
was just about perfect. Okay, now I'm just gonna kind of try to open this up just a little bit and get things down in there. No, it's just not gonna go. So it will after it has cooked for a little bit. <clears throat> now because I don't want, um, you can see all the juice, all the glaze that is down on the bottom of this pan, and that, as you would guess, would burn. And so I'm putting a half a cup of water in the bottom of the pan. This will not only help steam the squash, but it will keep any of the syrup and the um, juices from the squash from burning in the pan. So this goes back in the oven at 400 degrees. It's probably gonna take a total of about 45 minutes to an hour for the full thing to cook. However, I'm going to be bringing it back over here and show you when I um, add more of the glaze as we go. So we'll be back shortly. So this has been in the oven for 15 minutes and you can see that the little um, sections are starting to separate just a little bit, which is exactly what we want. We're now going to give it another dose of the glaze, hopefully getting some of it, more of it down in between. It's easy to separate these on the end where the hollow place is underneath. Not so easy up here. And we only cook this until the squash is done. And that depends on the size of the squash. So I'm guessing this one will be done in a total of about 45 minutes. Next time we pull it out, probably the ones in the neck will be easier to separate. So I think that there's still enough water in the bottom. I'm going to put a little bit more water in the bottom. Maybe not a full half cup, but just a little bit more. Okay, and we'll be back in about 15 minutes. I'm separating some of these wedges in hopes that the glaze can get down in these a little more easily. These are separated nicely through here. This is nearly done, probably another 15 minutes and we'll be done with this. So here's the glaze for the last time, except for the final. This is, uh, the glaze is really lovely. It is a mixture of sweet and savory and it's perfect for this squash. What we want to do is not overpower the taste of the squash. After all, that's why we're doing this, is for squash. But it, um, it lifts the flavor of the squash and accompanies it beautifully. Okay, this is probably about as good as we're gonna get. I have this much glaze left in the pan and we will pour that on um, at the end for a final um, decoration, so to speak. Okay, so this will go in the oven for the last 15 minutes. When we come back, we'll be ready to finish it off. The squash is done. It just looks beautiful. I'm going to now take the pecans and I'm going to add those pecans right to the um, rest of the glaze. And the purpose of adding it to the glaze is so that those nuts will better stick when we're going to um, put them on in just a moment. So I'm now going to transfer the squash over to my serving dish. And if you have a big long spatula like this, it would work just great. So very carefully here. 
And then I'm going to, now I'm going to do it this way. There we go. Get this out of the way. So now putting the finishing touching on, touches on this, I'm just going to take the remainder of the glaze and run it right down the middle. of each squash. The glaze has thickened up a little bit as it cools and that is because the butter, the ghee, um, is going back into its solid state but as it is put on this warm squash it will melt again. Now, if we want to, we can take the remaining cranberry sauce right here and put a few dollops around, but I don't think it needs it this time. I think it is beautiful just the way it is. So this is now ready to go on a holiday table as a side dish to all of the other very delicious things that we um, enjoy having at this holiday time. So we hope that you have enjoyed learning how to do Hasselback butternut squash. Um, know that you can do Hasselback preparation to baked potatoes as well. And they are every bit as gorgeous as this Hasselback butternut squash. So enjoy, and thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.